Yes, so it's five o'clock. All right. Well, good evening, everyone. Um, it is June 28th and 5 p.m. So I'll just like call the meeting to order. Um, and just like last time, we just post for now, just like go and say who we are. Yeah, okay, sounds like Celia. Uh, I'm Jan Bolodak, very okay. Uh, Fred Hooper, uh, position one. Ed Mars, Dave Larson, District Five. Awesome. Well, welcome everyone of our guests. Um, do we happen to have any uh, guests on Zoom? I just want to make sure I call it Ed Mars. So, all right. Welcome, Mr. T. So very glad to have you here. Thank you. Um, um, well, with that, why don't we just jump in? Uh, so I guess we'll kick it up to you or sure. Okay. Yeah. Uh, good evening, everybody. Thank you for attending. Uh, so tonight for this work session, we are going to get an update at the strategic awesome. plan, and we have uh, Dr. John Steeds with us to help provide a review of what we have so far and uh, talk about uh, next steps and what we have and get feedback that we've taken before. So Dr. Steeds. Okay, well, thank you. And I want to start by prefacing this with this is really a content draft. So realize this isn't what we intend the final strategic plan to look like. But it's uh, uh, <clears throat> the real meat of the strategic plan is here. So there will be some massaging with the specific language, um, some cleaning up of the formatting and some graphic design that we would plan to add to this. Um, but the, the main intent is before we get into that level of detail to make sure that the concepts of the content are what the board and the district administration see as um, accurate for what we've been able to pull together. Um, we've had a lot of great interactions over the last several months with uh, many members of the community and the school district. Um, you can see in the in the draft, we counted up how many people we had 113 total individuals involved in focus groups. Um, we had 25 people attend the summit and give us feedback. Um, and I thought it was very important to make sure that we captured those different perspectives in um, the strategic plan in the final version in some way. And I, I put together sort of a graphic that I thought captured that, but curious about feedback and I'm sure our graphics person is going to have some input on that as well. Um, probably should have started at the top. One, one thing we didn't do and we had talked back in January about the mission vision belief statements um, and how the board felt that those were still um, applicable and relevant to the school district and that there would be a potential willingness to revisit those when we got to this point in the process with the strategic plan um, really starting to gel together to see if those still aligned and if there was a desire to revisit those. Um, and I haven't really seen anything in, in, personally, just my feedback would be, I haven't seen anything emerge that says that your original mission, vision, and belief statements aren't as relevant today as they were when you initially adopted them. But I'll leave that to you to decide whether you want to revisit those or not. Um, so as we go down to the second page, as I was talking about the input that we had, um, you can see that I tried to indicate that with every single group that I talked to, diversity as to Quilla's strength came out loud and clear. I think that was one true common statement that everybody had. Um, there are some commonalities between some of the other areas and I grouped them together with the current and recent students or alumni in one group, staff in one group, parents, families in another group, and then community partners, youth organization, and government partners. And just to kind of show how each of them um, brought different areas to light during the discussions, and many of those were very complimentary. I didn't see any one group that really was an outlier in this that didn't agree with what everybody was seeing and saying about the district, about its strengths, its weaknesses, and its opportunities moving forward. But I do think there is some value in capturing this in some way in the final strategic plan so that when people look at the, the targeted work areas or those pillars that the district will be focusing on, they can see that they truly were derived from the input of the community, the staff, the students, and a large group of people 
and not just done in the back room with a couple of individuals that decided this is what we're going to work on. Uh, you go down, yeah. or, or, we, do you want to just pause there and discuss that before we move on? Yeah, I think that'd be a good idea. Okay. So I'm curious, just real quickly on the, the mission statement. I guess I don't remember how did we get that the mission statement that is on this draft that is different from our actual mission statement. Yeah. So so it looks like we have two different versions of a mission statement. One. One is that one. Mm -hmm. And then the other one is the one that the cabinet updated it to. Okay. It's their greatest potential. Interesting. Okay. I think what you have here is, I mean, <clears throat> I'm back to the original strategic direction, right? And the mission statement is what. Is listed here. Okay. I'm going to post second here. This one that's up on the screen. Oh, no, not that one. No, that one looks like somebody. That um, is that not the original? So the original one is the one that is on this other content draft. Yeah, the original content. Which this was the one that um, I got from Debbie after the fact that was edited by the, uh, the team. Yeah. Okay. So which one's. Can you read that one too? Yeah, you can. I, I still read it. I just sent you again. I know you did. Okay. That, but you sent me the, the, the other one. Um, oh, I don't know how this, uh, but did everybody else? Okay, yeah, I'll send it. I'll send it to you. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay, so the the one that, uh, the one on the the updated version um, says Temple School District mission is to create a learning community that supports and empowers students, staff, and families to reach their greatest potential. Yeah, that's the one I read. Okay. Which is the original. Okay. Right. We're we planning to change it. Is that? That is the edited version. Yeah, that was somebody's edit. Potential this for changing. Is one that this is the final one that got sent to us today. Or sent to us. This is the one that's in the docs. Yeah. So the other one, the one that I read that people recognize, this is the one that I think was originally sent and then edited. Yeah. Oh, so this is came after this. Correct. So I think we need to reconcile those to mm -hmm. see. And which one more accurately reflects the mission that we would want to pursue. So as Director Larson was talking about the, the unedited line was the one from the previous strategic director. I really I prefer the one that's not out there. It's more of a holistic, um, not so much about secondary education. Not so much about what they're going to become at some point in their life, but what we're doing with them right now. Yeah, I can I prefer the original. Yeah. Can I ask, kind of like what, what kind of drew y'all's discussion to go in that direction, of to, to get to the one that we have here? I think part of it is just thinking about uh, so post secondary. This is probably something similar you see in several school districts that talk about not just. Uh, post secondary education, but also people who are going careers directly after, or uh, just general citizenship about being a participant in the community. So I think there's probably ways to reflect both of those because we do want to make sure that we're preparing our students when they leave uh, Foster High School to be prepared to do any of these things that they want to do. So there's probably ways to incorporate 
the language of both because we do want it to be reflective of supporting our students and our families in that original piece. Yeah, I mean, I think language, personally, when I just look at these, like, the word, of course, that sticks out to me, because we use it all the time, we talk about all the time, is empowers. Mm -hmm. So to take that out, and that is such a big like piece about how anyone can even achieve those things is the ability, like that, that, that empowerment, that those efficacy. And um, so like, that's the, that's the thing that we want to go for because you have to have that before you can achieve these other outcomes. And the original one. Again, yeah. Uh, Tukula School District's mission is to create a learning community that supports and empowers students, staff, and families to reach their greatest potential. So different. Yeah. To me, this one talks about what we're doing today with our kids. The other one talks about where we want our kids to be in the future. And I don't, I don't think that's, I don't know, of course, we want that for our students. Yes. Uh, I, think, <laughs> I think both things are what well, we're doing today and what we're doing in the future. So, I think we're, there's probably work that we can continue to, to work on that to make sure that mission is like I guess I wonder, like, what's the difference between reaching their greatest potential? It actually makes it significantly more open to whatever that person wanted to achieve rather than these kind of prescribed post secondary education career citizenship, which I think there's also a lot of things that would come in with that word that means we can talk about that. Um, so, like I said, I mean, it, yeah. I think we can we can work to talk about what the future is. their greatest potential, no matter if they're pursuits or something like that. I mean, I think there's ways in which we can do both of those. Well, the other thing, the other way to do it is you can, you know, work out some of the details. I mean, this is really the high level, and right. so one of the things I think, still think that would be helpful in a lot of districts are doing this is to develop a. Um, um, profile of a graduate, which mm -hmm. kind of lists a bunch of things that, you know, beyond just the usual, you know, passing tests or whatever traits that we want students to come out with. And that's another way to kind of fill in the detail. The other thing I, I don't particularly like uh, introducing the word post secondary. Post secondary is something we all understand what it is, but I don't think well, a lot of people who are into the you know, education system, <laughs> what, what does that mean exactly? <laughs> so I don't, I'm not a big fan of having this kind of work in I couldn't just open it. I had a down. It's a map. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. So I think we can, again, I mean, this is the point is to get feedback on this to make sure that we're including all portions of the you know, strategic plan of uh, plan to get this done. So. Yeah. I, to me, to create the learning community is really strong language, which is different than, you know, just through whatever is called testing. So the individualistic versus collective. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, I have to obviously <laughs> but, yeah, but. Yeah, I mean, um, I think I just want to name, um, and I'm not entirely sure what we do about this at this point, um, but I was really, really disappointed to see that we got zero show alter feedback. Um, and the elementary feedback was done at the very last minute. Um, and so I guess kind of a kind of a question. Um, what was, I guess, was there any consideration in telling us last time when we brought it up about the, the desire to make sure that every student was included or had the opportunity? Um, was were you just not maybe aware that show Walter kind of wasn't a part? Um, and then where was why was there not an emphasis then to get that feedback while we still had a few opportunities to do so? Oh, 
I would say that the focus that when we started on this was to make sure that we did include student voice and we started with the high school and if you look at the high school feedback that we got from students and we had a very a very diverse group of students there giving us input um, it really sh significantly shaped the overall strategic plan to me the next step because you can see there's elements within the strategic plan when we get down into the body of it where we're talking about um, engaged learners that's going to include student voice and choice um, relevant instruction, meaning and relevant um, assessment. I think that's when the student voice is really going to be critical is when we get into the next layer of the strategic plan and to actually how you make these things happen. Um, from my past experience, when we're having these kind of bigger picture 30,000 foot discussions, high school students really grasp the concepts and are able to, to provide very quality input. When you look at the elementary student input, it's not as global as what you would hope to get in really shaping a strategic plan. But when it comes to the point of asking students in elementary school, in middle school, in high school, what is relevant to your learning? How do we better engage you? What are those decisions that you need to be involved in? That's where I think the student voice is really going to be amplified by the strategic plan. And it was to me significantly shaped by the high school input who, um, you know, aren't far away from the middle school and the elementary, and they're bringing that K-12 experience to the table when they gave us that input. So that would be the response I would have to why Showalter wasn't included. You know, and I will apologize that if it was your intent that we interviewed students from every single school, I didn't catch that and I didn't follow through on that. So I'll apologize for that as an oversight, but I do think there's still a very significant opportunity to include student voice at all levels as we move forward with this. I think I just want to respectfully push back just a little bit on um, it's hard to say that this the high school was so representative when there were only eight students um, that so there are only eight voices reflected. Um, and secondly, I want to push back against the fact that younger folks don't have the ability to really think in a high level way. Um, you just have to ask them differently um, and approach it in a different in a different way. Um, but they have some really, really amazing, incredible insight um, as to how they want to see. Yeah, they have a lot more insight, I think, than we give them credit for, which is where you know it's a it's a sign of adultism, I think, that comes out a lot in our in our systems. Um, so just want to push back on that. Um, of course, you are an expert in, in a lot of this, but I also know I work with in school age with school age young people a lot um, and engage them in really high level thinking conversations. So it's possible. Um, and it was very communicated, I believe, um, uh, uh, at, at several different instances to Dr. Herndon, to you, um, that we were very intentional about ensuring that we had a broad stakeholder input. Um, and uh, just my understanding, I thought the communication was very secondary to us in general. So I, that's also my fault for not specifically okay. clarifying that that had been a show also. So, yeah. you know, I think as we continue to do this, um, when we talk about a couple of the other pieces, that specificity of making sure we have including student voice from all the programs yeah. have to be an integral part of all the steps. So. And we, and we did take into account the most recent, well, it was last year's EES student survey. So we looked at student feedback at all levels through the EES survey from culture, climate, and student social emotional learning perspective too. So that was a component of looking at the data and framing um, the focus groups to begin with. Yeah, Curious if you have feedback on the way that I presented the focus group input in that diagram, if that kind of works for you, if that layout makes sense. Which one are you talking about? The one with diversity as Tequila's strength, it's on the screen now. Okay, all right, thank you. <laughs> It's fine. Yeah. So if you're talking about the way it's presented, it's fine. 
The only comment I would make is that the dark blue is really hard to read on. With black text. Yeah. 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 Uh, our graphic uh, person is going to completely really change the colors, the fonts, and everything. So uh, he'll hate everything I did, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a good a good way to lay it out. It was one of the things that was interesting to me was uh, I guess both both the staff and then the community groups commented on the underutilization of technology, which was. Um, not sure I would have necessarily expected that, but it's an interesting thing to note in there. Yeah, and I think it was recognized that there was high access, and that's why later on I referenced the SAMR model, and knowing that most people aren't familiar with it, I tried to spell it out, is really what's happening, and the students verified this in their focus group, that there's a whole lot of substitution going on. And maybe a little bit of augmentation, but it's it's technology is used nothing more than for an electronic version of a PDF or a worksheet. And what they're not getting to is those higher levels of redefining learning and modifying learning and doing things that you couldn't have done before without technology. And I think that's where all of those groups kind of got to is it's like we put these devices in kids hands and we used them during the pandemic in order to do the same things we did before. And now that we're back in person. It's really an aspiration of how can we leverage technology better to really create a more engaging learning environment for students. Yeah, I think that's that's a really insightful uh, look into it. I can remember back when we were first um, getting the technology levy uh, and figuring out what we we're going to try and do and get some money to to fund technology. One of the discussions was uh, about having. Uh, two instructional technology instructional coaches uh, precisely for that reason to make sure that technology gets you know deeply incorporated into the instructional process and along the way we we've, we've ended up with one I mean he's very good but that's um, anyway that's a, that's for me that was a good opportunity to look at um, you know how do you how do you do that? How do you get it more deeply integrated into the instructional process? It obviously involves you know professional development, but also probably involves somebody to lead that effort as well. So mm -hmm. anyway, that was that was great. So a couple of comments I I have. Um, I wasn't sure what the positives, what those statements were in the bottom of the two boxes, um, as opposed to what everything else that was there. But so that's one question. The other part is um, it's really hard to tell emphasis on this. Did, did one person say it or did 12 people say it? You know, I almost kind of wanted this in a wordle form so you could see what really came out of so many mouths instead of was this just one person saying this? And I don't I don't know how how that works, but um I think what you've got here is a list of what people said. And it's, it's kind of a priority list. If it didn't come up from multiple people, it probably wasn't included. Um, so it was those themes that resonated with the group as I was talking to the group that I tried to make sure I captured. Okay. <clears throat> what about those two positive comments? What um, did they here. Well, part of it is most of the stuff that's listed are opportunities that people talked about where they thought the district could improve upon. Those others that were really strong positives were, you know, everybody agreed that Tequila's diversity is its strength and that they're, that to, and that was the huge asset. When I said, you know, what is the strongest areas or the the positives and the strengths that you see of Tequila, those came out. Some of the groups struggled with some of the, the positives and the strengths, other than with the students and with the community partners, those were seen as things that they just jumped on and were adamant about that these were truly strengths of the district. Okay. So what do you have are two categories, opportunities and strengths. Yeah. And yet you didn't name the opportunity side of it, I guess. Well, uh, and that's something we can work on in the way it's graphically depicted and laid out. Yeah. And I guess I, you're right. I didn't explain that well enough. I didn't have kind of a preface on here for that. But almost all those bullet points are areas where people thought I'd like to see improvement in. Okay. That's helpful. Thank you. 
Yeah, I think the, the it's interesting. Avid, that's one that um, of all the programs we've done over the years, the students are the ones that are the most that come up and advocate for that program the most. I mean, mm -hmm. that's been year after year after year. So, yeah, and so if we move to that next section, the key elements for success, if you're ready to move on. Those were some areas when I think of the the main pillars and the work to be done in light of those opportunities and potential focus areas. Those are kind of the, the some key themes that the district needs to come together on to be foundational to be able to do the work. I'm hoping I'm making sense with this. So, so this, is your, this is your guidance on what you heard. Is that what yes. You're this is more this is more of my guidance and interpretation than the rest of it. The rest of it is the nuts and bolts of here's what I heard and I tried to I tried to synthesize it, make sure I wasn't putting too much personal bias in. This one is where I kind of took some personal bias and said if there's five kind of areas that the district needs to really strengthen in, it's improving the culture, improving the communication, making it more of a student-centered focus, definitely enhancing partnerships and then in the end, creating systems so that what you're building is sustainable and it's not based on an individual. And so these, these are some overarching <laughs> themes, I think, that need to be reflected upon as you look at each of the pillars and start putting action plans together for those action pillars down below. Does that make sense? Yeah, why would these not be our pillars? I almost see these as 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 foundational things to make sure that we're integrated into each of our pillars, like to ensure that we're asking ourselves the questions around each of them. Okay. Yeah. I think is that kind of what you were. It, it's almost like you could create a matrix, and you'd have to have these across the top and the pillars down the side, and then you're trying to make sure that as you're addressing a pillar, you're looking at how does this impact the culture? How is it going? How are we going to communicate this out? Are we going to make sure that we're student student focused? Are we going to have student voice within this? You know, what are the partnerships we need? And then what are those systems that need to be in place for endurance? So think of it as a matrix, but I didn't really want to lay it out like a matrix. Yes. Yeah. We get easily confused. I, I just have one more question on this one that's been edited. Um, all of the edits are carries. Is that because she was taking notes? Yeah. For everybody, you had a lot of opinions. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Actually, Carrie, I thought you were the only one read it, so I was able oh, to. No. I guess the one question. I mean, I like these. I like these uh, five. The one I was trying to kind of figure where. So where do you have the whole race and equity? focus how it, do you would so that be this, a separate one or would that because these are kind of overriding things or how do you look at that that's a great question because there's two ways to look at equity within a strategic plan and one is to call it out overtly as a an area of focus and the other is to ensure that it's infused in every area which it should be and with diversity as Tequila's strength, I wanted to be more subtle about the way I presented this with, with the assumption that equity will be driven into every component of this strategic plan, which is why I put that graphic up front that had equity as our strength or diversity as our strength. And that needs to be leveraged. So, you know, there's places we could easily start putting equity as a major focus area, but I think infusing it in the entire plan fits really well for Tequila, unlike maybe some other districts that aren't in the same position as you are. You can yeah, disagree okay. with me if you want, but that's just my explanation. No, that makes sense. And it is part of the conversation I've had with uh, people saying yes, they are work coming up this year with them and looking at our strategic plan and how we use that in all aspects of what we're doing. So if we're thinking about the matrix yeah. and you think about uh, even the conversations around the race and equity tool, right? Not being just a 
like a mechanism or a checkbox. It's how are these things integrated into decision making, which is what I kind of see this as do. So I was thinking about that. Have we, mm -hmm. you know, centered student focus? Have we got a good communication now? Are the partnerships in place for us to kind of move forward on these things as we move across these pieces? And so, um, but I also think there is uh, value in following the mm -hmm. things out as well. Mm -hmm. Not only infused throughout, but also you know, overtly in that as well. So, how to best kind of do both of those things, um, I'm happy to continue to explore. Yeah. I'm curious about one thing when I was looking at the, the student centered focus, talk about placing student needs and voice at the center discussion. I wonder if did anybody um, in the discussions talk about um, kind of the siloed nature that we have sometimes in this organization and breaking that down? Did that come up? I didn't see that really talked about here. But... Well, I think that that falls into both culture and communication. I, I think there was a lot of just a, adults need to work better together and have more confidence in each other. And there needs to be clear communications and expectations across the board. And that came out, you know, that came out really strongly with the staff and even some of the comments by the students. Um, when it got to the community partners, it, that was more a reaction to the data I shared during the data walk about some of the EES culture climate data. But people, they picked up on that and some people were surprised, other ones, others weren't, but it was a very definite theme within the staff. I think that again, that's another piece that we could definitely call out, um, trying to make sure. I think if we're following these pieces and the um, much of the components of the race and equity toolkit, again, not as a checkbox, hopefully that should start to break down that side of that people right. have. And I think, quite honestly, the more, you know, as I look at these pieces, one of the uh, one of the best areas I had uh, over this weekend at the conference was around um, integrating a lot more student voice. And that's also part of the focus of our work in this third year with PSESD mm -hmm. and the roadmap improvement collaborative and to be able to raise an that student voice. So we have some of that, but we just need to make it more systemic in all areas. So I've got a lot of good, good information from Yakima that's been doing that pretty successfully uh, over the last year or so. Uh, going into the next, uh, next year. And some of the things we already have, which I was kind of surprised the other one didn't have, was like a student, like student representative on the school board, uh, that kind of thing. So they're in some ways moving into that. But I think there are other ways we talk about, about um, making sure our student board representatives really have voice during our meetings as well. Yeah, I think that's interesting. We've talked to them about that. It's their hesitation was because they got two high schools and they didn't know which one to pick. I mean, there's ways yeah. to deal with all that stuff, but it's, it's interesting. Yeah. They'll get there. Yeah. Can you, can you talk a little bit about the statement of diversity as well as strength? Is that what you heard from the people? Is that the idea that you developed out of what you heard? And what does, how does that, how do you see that? That was a direct quote I heard from over half of the focus groups. I mean, they, they just blatantly, when I said, what are, what is Tequila's greatest strengths? And people would say, diversity is our strength. I wonder if we really know what that means. You know, even the students talked about how, how, how great the diversity was, but they also commented on how you have a lot of newcomers that you don't incorporate quickly enough and take advantage of the new perspectives that they bring and that they should be in more student leadership roles and given a voice within the school. So part of it was aspirational again, not just that it already is our greatest strength. Yeah, and it was a, a one group talked about new versus old Tequila and the fear that the old Tequila was getting pushed out with gentrification and that um, there was some concerns that that was going to impact the true value of the diversity within the district. And it was quote, new, new Tequila versus old Tequila.
So this John, it's this page that then the pillars that you were talking about. Right. So this would be the pillars, and I presented it in two ways, one in a graphic form to show how there's some interrelation so it didn't just look like a list. And then what the you know the bulleted list below is the exact same things. It's just presented in a different format. And so you've got really four key areas to focus on. And within each of those four areas, you have some sub, sub areas that would be focus areas. And the intent would be the district would work on what is the action plan associated with each of these to be able to implement an improvement plan on it. Which when you think of it that way, now if you think of the matrix, it kind of makes sense that you've got these different categories within the overall system that you want to make sure you're uh, paying attention to as you're trying to work on an improvement plan for these. And a goal wouldn't be to say, you know, you're going to do every single one of these in one year. It would be what is the priority? Where are what work you already have in progress that you can continue working on that aligns with this? So you know, you may be develop, conceptually developing one area in year one while you're actually doing some implementation in another area. And that conceptual development may not be actually implemented till year three of the plan. You know, how this would be. You, how, how do you reconcile the high expectations and excellence for all the clear and common goals with the personalized learning? So I would say your common goals is not necessarily having, it's a common system of goal setting. You need to make sure that there is some standardization across it and how you determine your goals. But for an individual student, it's just like considering that you've got an IEP structure within special education. And so you have a system for setting goals for each student within special education within their IEP but the individual goals may differ greatly from one student to another. And it, when we talk about personalization, it's in essence, how do you create a system that can allow a student to have their own IEP, their individual education plan as they pass, pass through the system? And are we setting goals that are aspirational enough for every student within our system? Or do we have students that say, I can get an A out of this class, that's all I need to do, and why bother doing any more? And it doesn't really matter what I learn, it's whether I get the A out of the class or not. And it's moving beyond that into the concept of, you're here to get the most out of your education, we're here to help you grow the most possible. So then how are we gonna have this goal setting system that we put in place that allows for that and pushes students? That's kind of the thinking I had when I put those two together. Yeah, I, and I think I get that. I, um... I just, I struggle with when we have, you know, when I read that first one, I've got standardized tests, um, determining those clear and common goals. And um, I'm probably too rigid, too rigid on what I think those are gonna be. Uh, yeah, I can, I can get my head around it at some point. Yeah, but it's good to have you look at it and give me that feedback that, so we need to be better with the language that we clearly state this doesn't mean standardized tests. <laughs> yeah, and I, I don't think necessarily it's just academic either. And I, I kind of do have a question now back for kind of the, uh, for Dr. Herman and your team. Um, talk to me about a little bit why you chose to take out social and emotional and change it with behavioral. So for clarity, the original uh, bullet point, first one here was clear and common goals, academic, social, and emotional. And it now is clear and common goals, academic and behavioral. Yeah, I mean, again, I think, you know, we, we can probably just talk about we talk a lot about social emotional and I think we do want to make sure that we have that as some of our clear uh language that we're following out in this case 
that's not not necessarily the same. Behavioral uh, does have some elements to that. I think probably um, you know again different feedback from different folks. So uh, I'm okay. I, I mean we use social emotional. We've been talking a lot about social emotional, so I can understand how we would want to keep that kind of consistent. Yeah, and I think just kind of my own reactions to behavioral, particularly when we think about it in the context of like the academic system that we're in, the structure and the white dominant structure, right? The behavioral can often mean conformity. And so are we, I, I want to be mindful of that word. Yeah. Um, and it, and if, if that's not what we mean, then let's not use that word. Yeah, I didn't, I kind of same reaction. I didn't really like the word behavior because mm -hmm. first of all, social emotional is much more than just behavior yeah. or it's your state of mind and a lot of things so it's kind of it's narrow it would be narrowing the scope which is not what i was going to do yeah and yeah the second kind of take emotions out i mean that's i mean ruler is all about you know recognizing emotions mm -hmm. and then positively mm -hmm. figuring out how to do deal with it. So I wouldn't. So the edits that were made, was that a um you all came to a consensus to make the edits? I think we were just different people had different feedback on the document. <clears throat> so I think it was probably just looking at commonality of common words. Okay. That that. So um so, so it could have been one person throwing out an idea that then got put in. Yes. Right. Yeah. Okay. yeah, because it's it kind of in a Google share opportunity oh, okay. for people to be able to kind of again, okay. I think Ms. Marty you know, looked at the edits that we had and tried to stay that safe. So. Okay. But again, that's kind of the, the purpose of this step is to get all that feedback to say, you know, ultimately, you as a board are going to have to. You know, adopt vote on this particular strategic plan. We want to make sure that it's we're getting all the feedback that we have so we can continue to, you know, continue to go through the process. Now, at some point, you're going to continue, at some point, we're going to have to make a decision. I'm not saying that, you know, is in the next two weeks or anything. Right. But um, there'll always be feedback coming from some people saying, oh, but we want you to tweak this again. We want you to tweak sure. this again. Right. I think for us, it's mm -hmm. the majority of you saying, I think that accurately, accurately reflects a bit more where we want to go, given what we have. So each step along the way, I mean, we want to continue giving feedback. So as I'm, as I'm thinking about this, like we have summer school going on. We do have some middle schoolers. We can get some feedback from middle schoolers coming up before the next meeting for sure. I guess one of my concerns is we don't have collaboration mentioned mm -hmm. too often. And I think that's one of our weaknesses, not only collaborating amongst mm -hmm. each other, but within our community. And I do agree with John that the collaboration, the most important collaboration is putting the plan in place, putting the strategic putting the smart goals or whatever mm -hmm. those actual steps we're going to take right. in place. Yeah. And under relationships, we do have collaboration and problem solving problems and seeking improvement. So it's its own separate sub bullet. I, I think though that's like a, a theme that really could run through all of these. Mm -hmm. um, because collaboration needs to happen all right. We need to co-create co -create and collaborate on what those high expectations are. Um, how how do we engage in empathy and if there's no collaboration, right? So there's a theme. Mm -hmm. I see that, yeah, more that's more of theme. An another word that I'm surprisingly not seeing here, um, which I know I said at the summit a few times, <laughs> um, is the word belonging. Um, and we think about belonging and inclusion, like equity is amazing, right? Diversity is great, but diversity is only as good as the way that we actually like demonstrate the beauty of that, right? By actually having inclusive practices where people feel a sense of belonging. Um, mm -hmm. 
Yeah, it, it could go under this equity section really easily, couldn't it? So, I mean, it could go on lots of places. Yeah. I mean, it could be and, and then I, I guess I wonder, like, if you think about even the way that this is structured, have any of y'all had the opportunity to read that book yet? Going to the for dignity. Yep. Okay, so if we look through here, if we look here, excellence for all is our first bullet. That means that excellence, right, achievement yeah. is our is at the top. Yeah. Where really that can't come unless we first have belonging and inclusion and safety and all of those other things. So even I think in the way that this is structured, um, perhaps there's an opportunity to maybe shift and put relationships yeah. at the top. Yeah. Yeah, and and engage learn mm -hmm. me from mm -hmm. next. And then everything maybe even excellent yeah. at the bottom. Yeah. And my goal is by creating the graphic that had the circular image in the center and doing something like that is to show that these are all interrelated and that it, it, it's not one above the other. The only reason that they were laid out this way is I tried to also come up with something with the first letter of everything that would create kind of a slogan. And that's where I had it. One, one of the drafts had Tequila, here the learning happens, and using the H E R E as the first letter of each of the items there. Um, obviously, that didn't go over well with Cabinet because that's not in the current draft. <laughs> there are all sorts of ways we can do catchy acronyms or things that are easy to remember. We can always look at that. And, and, and yeah. right, they are all interconnected. And one can't actually effectively happen without the other. So that is also true. Um, so not, yeah, I don't like hierarchical structure particularly either. So I appreciate the circular narrative of that. Um, yeah. I would agree. I appreciate that better because anytime you have that kind of linear downward, it, whether or not you promote it or not, That's whatever is at the top of the list is the priority at the top. So, um, so I think that circular fashion is one that mm -hmm. is like no matter how you spin that, you can spin that depending on, you know, as you're juggling these priorities on any given day. It's like, oh, oh today great. I've got to, today I've got to focus on this, and I've seen this, you know, in the classrooms again with with staff who use ruler. They're like, well, we're going to start on this, but I've got a lot of students in the red right now, so we got to focus on that for the next couple of minutes. We'll shift the kind of math lesson for a little bit later. So I think for for many they are doing that, and for others, I think this you know presents a good opportunity to see how they're kind of all in a different way. Yeah, I would feel I would feel much better about all this, and I guess it's just because I'm looking at it linear, linearly if it was upside down, even on the circle. The top left usually, I understand it's the first one. So um, yeah, I I think relationships in this district okay. like okay. can be a priority. And I'm taking notes on this for our graphics person. <laughs> and and when it came to the graphics, because I didn't involve him. It's really at this point, it was what was a stock thing that I could import in Microsoft Word and make work. And so this just kind of, again, this is just conceptual, not that this is a final thing. So knowing that you want relationships to be really kind of the, what your eye draws to first within that is the kind of direction I'll give to him. So one other thing just to clarify, a kind of a sub intent that you may not pick up on is when I put in equity with empathy, I, I use equity with sort of a dual meaning. And one of the things that, I mean, I was in a, a DEI training about a year and a half ago, and it was an interesting concept that the leader brought forth about equity. And he talked about having equity in a home as in real estate. And equity is a term of ownership. And when we really start thinking about equity, are we giving ownership to everyone within the system? When we start thinking about the historically marginalized individuals, it's not just us trying to, you know, the people that have been in power trying to raise them up, 
but it's truly giving over that power to them from an equity standpoint where they have ownership in the decision and ownerships within the system. So that's a sub meaning that I think is important to conceptually bring into this. And I don't know whether the bullets really brought that out. Yeah, thanks for adding that context. I think that's helpful. The bullets I wanted to bring out. I'm just kind of reflecting on uh, yeah, I think it would be really beneficial to point that out, particularly because we have a different definition for equity and the way we use it. Um and, yeah. And and then are there other times that we use equity throughout this? Oh, so maybe is is equity in in that particular bullet the right word then to cap really capture what like that sentence? Yeah. Interesting equity in that concept um, to me ties pretty closely to belonging. I mean, if mm -hmm. you feel like you have ownership in your learning experience. Mm -hmm then you're going to feel like you belong. And so, um, yeah, we're talking about putting belonging under relationship, but again, it's probably one of those words that, you know, can be in several places, if not all of them. Mm -hmm. So equity with empathy. I like it. What's what kind of what was your thought process behind those two words together? I, I to me there has to be understanding along with it, and and deeper than just understanding, but true empathy. You, in order to respect people, you have to be able to empathize with them. In in part of my thinking, and I think I wanted to get more impactful than just every equity as a buzzword is part of why I went there and wanted to add that in. I wanted people to really reflect on it. Mm -hmm. Nitpicky about another word, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Uh, so students as leaders, this the sub first bullet point under the first bullet point of equity and empathy. Uh, students as leaders in parentheses in the original, it said utilize the knowledge experience of students, and the new one says value student voice in creating classroom school culture. Um, for some reason, the difference between utilize, I don't know if utilize is the right word either, but the difference between utilize and value, utilize feels more actionable versus value could almost be um yeah yeah it's it's that like leverage or incorporate yeah yeah the word i've seen incorporate i mean yeah. it's not just sitting there it's, <laughs> it's being used to, to make decisions encourage a lot yeah, yeah. And I think by doing those things, it's actually how we show that we're valuing the voice of them, right? <clears throat> so maybe it's just defining it more uh, in that or changing the word. Okay. Yeah, so I, I kind of got kind of on the word staff, like in improving staff understanding of students' lives. Isn't that just improving the understanding of student lives? Isn't that for everybody? Yeah, and I guess that's up to the chief too. So, to create a fashion people culture. Okay, so kind of keep those two pieces together, utilize or encourage or something mm -hmm. um, to include kind of classroom people culture. Where are we? Same 
Um, the decision to take out the specific piece on emphasizing the importance of communicating with our multilingual students and families. Um, why, how does that get there? Oh, sorry, relationships. The second board under relationships. Yeah. Sorry, I was like, I don't want to get confused. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we actually added it because yeah. we yeah. felt that it wasn't yeah. really okay. So that was a key piece. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Okay. What do <laughs> folks think personalized learning is talking about? It's the National Engaged Learners Personalized Learning. This is the title. This is the original. This is the the change. I think it's going to be interesting. I think that in that personal, personalized learning, again, it's probably just a way of looking at that to, to reflect that students feel that it is meaningful content mm -hmm. for them. So I don't think it negates like kind of personalized learning. I think it's just a, a different way to reflect that there's more, more meaning in there and still high quality instruction at this time. The personalized learning to me indicates a relationship where mm -hmm. the other language I didn't think good. Um, and I think that's kind of that first bullet gets to kind of their student voice and to incorporate students to find them. You know, that's that's getting specific to the individual. Mm -hmm. So I think that engaged learners was meant to be kind of more broad and getting them to fall into the individualized pieces. And I would say the, word, the term personalized learning com comes from my own bias, bringing this in from the previous work I did in Evergreen, because we did a personalized learning initiative where we came up with our own instructional framework with seven components of personalization. And one of those key ones was voice and choice. Um, and so, you know, when I looked at that, that's really what I was hearing from people is kind of that concept of students having some say in what their learning pathway is, what topics they explore, how they apply the learning. Um, you know, when you think of the depths of knowledge and you get into that level four on a depth of knowledge and you're trying to apply learning in a new situation to show that you've mastered understanding, giving students the flexibility to decide what is that new situation they're gonna apply that learning in instead of having everybody in the class following the same assignment. So that's, you know, the, the essence of why I threw that term personalized learning in. I did during the um, summit, I, I got, I picked up some negative connotations of that from staff. They heard that term and they thought, now I have to create a separate lesson for everybody in the classroom. Um, and so I can see some hesitancy for maybe not putting that out there within the strategic plan if the term doesn't have a common understanding within the district. Just want to draw attention that it is uh, six, almost six o'clock. Um, oh, we're going to like uh, consider the word relevant, um, adding meaningful and relevant content. Um, I know culturally relevant is a subtle point there, but even the idea of adding relevant makes it more personal um, or could perhaps. Um, and it's also then not just relevant to culture, but also relevant to like now and what's happening, you know, for fifth graders right now. Um, uh, okay, so with that, what are kind of the next steps for this and when will we get to see this again? So to me, the next steps are to incorporate your comments and get it, get the language down between the draft that you've been given, the notes that I've taken, and then solidify this to the point where, you know, it sounds like conceptually the board is in agreement that we've hit the main areas that the district should be focusing on. 
and we're getting down to really the language nuances of what we're, you know, what words we're using. And if that's the case, what I would suggest is we get a next draft. I then give that to the graphics person to put some stuff together and then bring that back to the district and the board from that point, instead of involving the board before we can get some graphics. And that would allow them some flexibility because the company we use are not education professionals. So they're going to look at this from the layman's perspective and they're going to come back to me and say, this doesn't make sense. This doesn't make sense. Can we tweak some of this? And I'd like to have the flexibility to be able to do that before we've really solidified the final language. We'll also get uh, that additional middle school feedback uh, reports and make sure that we have that reflected in there. Um, and then, yeah, so any, any of the other uh, feedback that we've had, um, we'll take a look at that. I wonder, actually, I'm going to keep that next time. Okay. Wonderful. Well, thank you. Uh, I think that's it. Okay, yeah. So we will officially adjourn at 6 one Thanks for all your great feedback. I really appreciate the thoughtfulness yeah. you put behind this. Yeah. Thanks for your feedback. Thank you, John. Okay. I'm going to say this a little bit. I think we have some input was missing. Yeah. When we think about not even doing the fools, we're just kind of we're just you know updating as a living document, yeah. right? Maybe there's a way like throughout this next year, it would be really strategic okay. about saying, okay, like really getting input along the way.